Mark, tell me about the Nissan Leaf. What you're looking at is our production-ready, pure zero emission vehicle. I mean, this car doesn't even have a tailpipe. We can go 100 miles in a single charge. It's got a 90 mile an hour top speed, room for five adults, all features and amenities as you'd expect. And we're now 11 months away from launch. And this is gonna be available first in the Pacific Northwest? Well, we're looking at as we launch at the end of 2010, we'll be in 10 to 15 markets around the country. Places like Seattle, the state of Oregon, of course, LA, San Francisco, San Diego, but Phoenix, Tucson, the state of Tennessee, Raleigh, North Carolina, we're going to be all over the country, and our, our hope is by the end of 2011 really to be on sale across the United States. Tell me about the, the range and, and charging time. Yeah, the car has 100 miles of range against a single charge, and charging, and I want to show you what a home charger looks like. This is what a home charger will look like in your garage. This is a unit that charges under 220 volt power. So if you know your electric dryer circuit at home, it's that same kind of power. This plug is universal. You know, we're here today at the, wa the Washington DC Auto Show. Every electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid that you see on the showroom floor uses the same plug. So it's very, very easy. Charging happens at the front of the car. This is your plug that charges under both 110 volt or 220. So take your, take your charger. Plug it in, just that simple, charge overnight. If you ran the car down to zero and you wanted to go all the way up to 100%, it would take you eight hours using 220 volt power. We also have the availability of charging under fast charge. And what we see for fast charging is think about interstates and you're traveling down and you want to get off at a rest area or you know, grab a bite to eat. Zero to 80% in 26 minutes under a fast charge situation. So 110 volt plug anywhere you can plug the car in. 220 using a home garage charger like this, or even in the public space, you know, a parking garage downtown, or 26 minutes in a fast charge situation. Once the infrastructure is there to, to make that happen? Yeah, and as we go city by city, state by state, the, the infrastructure is rolling out. We believe that 80% of the charging is going to happen at home overnight. So that's we, it's easy, it's convenient, simple as plugging in your cell phone every night. But we know that people want to see some public infrastructure, see some public charging. So where does a car go every week? You go home to work. So workplace charging would be another one. Think of regional malls, think of airports, think of movie theaters, think of um, museums, stadiums. Those are all places public charging will be available. Uh, and then you know, think of that interstate travel process. So again, where will charging stations be? That's where they're going to go. Now, we designed this car really for consumers in mind. So again, this is not a test or demonstration vehicle for us. This is a vehicle that you know, we hope to sell you know, tens of thousands initially and then on our way to over 100,000 vehicles a year. Uh, so we, again, designed this vehicle for consumers in mind. Okay, we're inside the, the Nissan LEAF and really all the information that we're supplying out, all the things you expect, of course, are there, but we've added a layer of information on things like distance to empty, state of charge of your battery, how much power are you using out of your battery or actually through regeneration braking, actually putting back into your battery. The navigation system is set up to look at things like charging station locations, uh, what type of charging is available, uh, even things as such as reachable areas. So you don't have to sit there as a consumer and actually think about, oh, can I make this trip? Flip a switch on your, on your steering wheel, on the navigation screen comes up reachable area and anywhere in there you'll be able to go based on the power that you have. So everything here is designed to give you information about range, state of charge, and how you're actually using the vehicle. We even have an eco-meter. So depending on how you're driving, we're actually gonna send you signals of kind of real-time feedback. So if you wanted to extend your range, here's some things that you could do to actually change. So charging timer, one of the things you can set your vehicle up for is actually when you come in at home, this one is an example of 11 o'clock at night. The car will go to sleep until 11 o'clock, wake up, and then begin to charge so you can take advantage of time of use rates. Through your cell phone, you'll actually be able to preheat or pre-cool your car. This is an example of what the screen actually looks like, where you have dialed up your car, you're 15 minutes away, and you want to cool the cabin down to 75 degrees. The car will wake up, start cooling using grid power versus battery power. A lot of information in the car all about reachable areas. So this is an example of 
You've got distance empty of 82 miles. What does that circle look like of actual usable range? Charging stations. Your navigation system will become preloaded with all charging station locations, and because there's GPS in the vehicle itself, will update when new charging stations show up, just because you've plugged in. And it also will tell you what type of charging it is, whether it's fast, 440 volt power, or 220. From a telematic standpoint, we know that consumers are really interested in how are they driving versus it's it's that it's that um, challenge that people have that just like you see in hybrids. Oh, I got I was able to get 58 miles in my hybrid. Oh, I only got a 52. How'd you do that? We'll actually keep track of how how people are driving to understand how much CO2 they're saving. This is the eco meter. So as you change your driving style, of course, the more you have the bars show up, they're actually driving the most efficient, less efficient, the number of bars disappear. And over time, either you're growing trees or trees begin to get cut down. Okay, so here in the instrument panel, we're providing all the information on both state of charge, battery temperature, and power. So on this side, you're actually looking at your state of charge. So what percentage of the battery you have left and a distance to empty meter that's actually calculating how much range do you have left based on your driving style. This is, think of it almost like a Geiger counter. So this is the zero point. When you're under hard acceleration, you use, all these will light up. You're using maximum power out of the battery. Back to zero. On this side, we're talking about regeneration. So in coast down, or actually using your brakes, you're actually putting energy back into your battery. So you'll be able to tell as you go down a long hill or use your brakes how much energy you're actually putting in. The typical odometer, you know, driving times, all that stuff that you'd expect, and a temperature gauge of your actual battery pack temperature. Some of the design features of the car we're looking at is both the front and rear LED headlamps and tail lamps. Again, LEDs they look great from a design standpoint, uh, aesthetically very pleasing, but of course, you know, from a pure engineering standpoint, it's 50% less energy draw out of the battery to run these lights versus halogens. So our engineers thought through and optimized every piece of this car to always try to get as much range as we can for the size of the battery that we have on board. Now for things like the heat, mm -hmm. cabin heat, yes. it's going to affect range. Sure. Are there seat heaters? Yeah, actually, that is one of the things, um, you know, as you look at heat, of course, you know, people don't think about, well, there's no internal combustion engine on this car at all, so there's no source of heat. Uh, the engineers will cringe a little bit when I say this, but really it's a fancy space heater. It's a resistance heater. You run energy through a coil, that coil heats up, and we actually pass air over, and that's how you heat up the cabin. So a couple of things we're thinking about to help that. You can preheat this car. So you're sitting at home or you're sitting in a meeting and you're gonna be out down to your car in 15 minutes. You use your cell phone, dial up your car, say, hey, turn the heater on while you're plugged into the grid. So the car will actually warm up using grid power versus battery power. The actual seats will have, will have heated seats and heated steering wheels. So you as a consumer and actual driver will actually, may feel warmer than maybe the ambient air temperature around you. And of course it's got automatic temperature control so you'll actually be able to set your cabin temperature. So it will you know, hold the temperature at, you know, if you like it at 75, that's fine, but you'll use more power. If you cut that back to 68 or 65, you, you'll use less power. So it's all a function of how much energy is being pulled out of the battery, what do you like the cabin temperature to be, and then the available range. Will, the, will that draw be reflected in the in the end cabin? Yeah, the distance empty meter will reflect that. Uh, and again, why we set the car up to have 100 miles of range was, in those times when it is, zero degrees yeah. and you need to run the heater. We don't want people to be worried about, do I have enough range to get back and forth to work? You go back and think about that there's only, people on average drive less than 40 miles a day. So we made sure that, you know, in worst case scenario, still people could make those kind of round trip commutes without any problem. Um, but again, there is, there is draw. You're not gonna see 100 miles of range when you're running your heater and it's zero outside because it just physically can't be done. It's good to hear that candor from the manufacturer. Well, it's, it's, it's a physical truth. Um, air conditioning, on the other hand, is very efficient. So, I mean, air conditioning, very little load on the battery itself. So those times when it's 100 degrees outside, you're running an air conditioner. Um, you know, again, you may not see 100 miles, but you may see you know, 5 10% less. But again, more than enough to do every day.
The most popular question we always get is range, and we've said very clearly 100 miles against the LA4 test cycle. Why did we pick the LA4? The EPA and California a couple years ago said, you know, we had to decide for consumers to be able to define what a fully functional electric vehicle would be. And they decided an EPA certified test, they called it the LA test cycle, and they said, you know what, to be considered a fully functional EV, you had to do 100 miles against this test. So our engineers said, okay, that's the independent third party. We're going to make sure our car does at least 100 miles against that, and that's how we set up the car to, to, to perform. One of the things our engineers had to consider was, of course, aerodynamics. The car itself has a 0.29 coefficient of drag. Well, what does that mean? It means we try to control the airflow both over the car and under the car. I mean, these actually have functional use to actually control the airflow over the vehicle itself. It's completely sealed underneath, so there is nothing hanging down underneath to cause turbulence. Our headlamps actually have a patent, believe it or not. We found an electric vehicle is quiet. And so we actually found a source of wind noise. There was turbulence coming off the side mirrors on both sides of the vehicle. So driving our noise vibration harshness engineer is crazy. But we had to put the car in the wind tunnel and actually realize the headlamp design actually serves to split the airflow over the mirror and send the point of connection back behind the car because it eliminated this source, this source of rumble and noise. We have to think through every piece of the vehicle. There's a spoiler on the car. Again, functionally and aesthetically looks very good, but it helps, again, management of airflow and actual design of the vehicle itself. The spoiler has a solar panel, an integrated solar panel to it as part of its design. And that solar panel is designed to help charge the 12 volt battery on board that keeps things running like your clock, the preset on your radio, those kind of things as you go. Let me talk to you about what batteries look like today. I mean, many people think we're still talking about flashlight batteries. I mean, that technology is of maybe five or six years ago. This is what a battery pack components look like today. What you're seeing here are actually four individual battery cells in one module. So they look about, is there about an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? You can see they're very, very thin. There's four of these cells right now in this one module. 48 of these modules power the 24 kilowatt hour battery on board the LEAF. So they're not, they're not laptop batteries, they're not double they're, A's, nothing. None of those things. Um, the chemistry is actually totally different than the lap. I mean, we all are, we're using lithium ion, of course, but it's a lithium ion manganese chemistry. We picked that because it's very durable, it's very reliable. Uh, actually a little inexpensive from a, from a source standpoint and very stable. 